The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. So, welcome to the lab. I'm going to start off today, mostly everything we'll do is be hands-on. I'm going to start off today just to reiterate some of the things that we talked about um, last Monday and expand on a few of those ideas about what we're doing here. Um, and the idea of this little introductory lecture is just to say, what's our purpose? What's the expectations? Um, what are we doing here? Um, Pretty much every place you go, there's a set of expectations of what you're expected to do and what you're expected to be done to you. <laughs> um, and it's very different depending on what you do. If you go to a baseball game, it's a totally different set of expectations of both uh, what you're allowed and prepared to do and uh, what you're expecting to see than if you went to a concert or if you go to a physics class. Uh, all different stuff, all different sets of expectations. Um, all different ideas about what we're doing here. So this little thing is um, to give you an idea of what this is about, what we're doing here. The first thing, which to me is the most important thing, we already touched on in the last class, which is just the idea that we're all improvisers. That simply by virtue of being a human, you're already a master improviser. Where I go from there is that humans are also oral creatures. We understand the world through sound a lot. Not only through talking, not only through um, our experience of the sounds of other humans, but also the sounds in the world inform us all the time in all different kinds of ways. Um, and also, each of us grows up surrounded by music and sound. We all have a personal universe of sound that is ours. In this class, and. Um, in this lab, what we'll be doing a lot is dealing with how to marry our awareness that we have grow from growing up as improvising people to our awareness of our understanding of sound, our personal universe of sound. Putting those two things together and figuring out how to express ourselves improvisationally through using sound, both individually and as a group. So that's our basic task ahead of us. In this particular class, we're doing that by examining different ways that people improvise, different methods that people use to structure improvisation, different ways that they use to conceptualize how to improvise. Um, because as improvisers, you come up here and when you're improvising without any music or without any prior structure, anything is possible, right? That's an overwhelming responsibility. <laughs> you could do literally anything how do you decide what to do? So that's the first part of being an improviser, is how do you start? How do you start? And a lot of this class is about how people start. Today, I think uh, Mark was talking about graphic notation, I think, and some, some kinds of ways to conceptualize improvising, starting with something that's visual. It's a way to start, right? And from this, then, that gives you a starting off point where you can use your understanding, your intuition about improvising, your understanding, your knowledge about sound, how it works, what it means. You can use all that stuff to say, OK, that's my starting place. How do I use that stuff? Starting from here. right? So a lot of this class is about that. How do you start? Where do you come from? The other thing that's great about this kind of class, this kind of improvisation, this kind of group, is that there's no particular stylistic boundaries to what we're doing. In a lot of different musical situations you go, you go into, there's a set of boundaries, just like if you go to the ballpark, there's a set of boundaries of what's going to happen. Um, if you go to a jazz concert or you play in a jazz big band, there's a set of boundaries of what you expect to happen. And you can, Pretty much everything you do is going to be within that pretty well-established set of boundaries. Um, in this situation, we don't have any of those. The boundaries that we have, um, there's some set up by the structure of the class, which is bringing in these different artists who specialize in different ways of conceptually, 
conceptualizing improvisation. Um, but outside of that and looking at those specific artists that, that, and ideas that Mark's looking at in the class, outside of that there's no particular boundaries to how we improvise or what we do together when we improvise. The only boundaries are ones that we set up in the moment and the way we set these up is through a series of structured improvisations. So most of the work we'll do in here is examining improvisation or examining music through the use of structured improvisational exercises. There, there are ways to say what happens if you do this, you know? Just like when you were talking today about graphic notation, you know? What happens if you do this and you say play it? You know? So we'll work a lot with structured improv, and there, there are ways to look at something on a microscopic level, to go and look at something closely, a particular aspect of improvisation or of music. And then once you examine it, bring it into your conscious awareness, then all that understanding that you have is then available for you to use in a bigger context when you're improvising, whether you're improvising on a squiggle or on a mode or on giant steps. So what we'll do is we'll take these specific exercises, hone in really closely on, little, on small ideas, and then we'll use those in a freer context, hopefully later on, um, to improvise together as a group. So that's the second thing. There's no particular boundaries. So you're able to use your entire personal universe of sound to improvise with. And what that means is there's no right and there's no wrong. So remember when we were talking about how making this a safe place to improvise, making this a safe place to show who you are and to be who you are in the moment. One of the reasons why it's safe is because there's no judgment, because there's no boundaries set up by a particular style of music. There's no judgment about what's a right or a wrong sound. There's no judgment about what sounds and can go together. Any sound can go with any other sound. Right? So what we're concerned with is not judging which sounds are right or wrong when you put them together. We're concerned with what does it mean? What does it feel like? Did putting those sounds together express what you wanted it to express? Did it mean what you wanted it to mean? Did it have the effect on the people that were observing you do it that you wanted it to have? So it's really all sonic experimentation that we're doing together, using these elements of improvisation and of music and of sound that we've grown up with our entire lives to say, okay, if we do this and this, what does it do? What does it mean? How does it work? Do I like it or do I not like it? Does he like it? Does he not like it? It's all The other thing that um, Mark also mentioned in the first class, but I think is worth reiterating, is that this is really about having fun. Improvisation should be fun. It should be fun in every way that you can have fun. <laughs> so it should be crazy fun, it should be silly fun, it should be totally serious, intense fun, the kind of fun where you're so engrossed in something that you lose all track of time. You know, The kind of fun where you're looking at formulas and figuring out how they work. All the kinds of fun you can think of is you can have up here improvising. And that's what it should ultimately be about. I think that's about all the things. We'll do some more. But that's basically, just to give you an idea of where we're at here, um, and I mentioned before that the other really important thing, um, but I'll reiterate that too, is uh, that it's important that you tell the truth. That really what makes the difference between an improvisation that is compelling, that grips your audience, and one that people sort of fall asleep or run away from is, are you telling the truth? Are you expressing yourself? Are you showing yourself? If you could do that, if you start from there, then every note, every phrase, every sound you play is going to have meaning. And over the course of this class, we'll figure out different ways to approach it, different kinds of meaning that you can have. Um, and you'll get a chance to experiment with different ideas of your own to see what your personal universe of sound contributes to this group and to what we do as improvisers. Um, 
So today I was thinking we'd start off, since we're dealing with graphic notation and I think we're going into some stuff with film, improvising the film later, um, I'm going to skip over a lot of things I would usually do in, the be in a beginning group um, and go to some more stuff that's related to uh, more visual parameters and movement, different things that you might be encountering in the course of your next few classes and your next few assignments. So what I'd like to do is do uh, start off with an exercise we'll all come up without instruments. A lot of times I'll start off with uh, some theater exercises or exercises that don't involve instruments as a warm up. So we are filming today, so um, usually I do a circle, but I think for the sake of the camera we'll do sort of like a semicircle if you can just get in a big arc here so you can all see each other, but still leave an opening so we're not staring at any, the back of anybody's head. This exercise is uh, a very simple exercise. It's about movement and sound. And the way it works is this. One person comes out here to the center. They're actually thinking of the camera placement now. <laughs> The center might not work so good. You might have about you just step forward from where you are. Right? And what you're going to do is you're going to make a gesture and a sound. It can be anything. It could be any kind of gesture, any kind of sound, and you're going to repeat it. And then everybody else is going to repeat it with you. Right? Does that make sense? And then after we do it for a while, everybody gets into the groove. It's how it, we got it going on. Then you're going to go and take someone's place and they're going to step out and do theirs and so on until everybody gets a chance to do Yeah? All right. So um, I'll start. Let's see. Yeah, we might need to get a little space in between each other just in case where there's movement involved. <laughs> All right. All right, let's do this. Boing, 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 boing. Now just be aware that everything that the person does actually has meaning. So their facial expression, everything that they're doing is, is potential. Ding dong. Ding dong. 
Ding dong. Ding dong. Ding dong. I don't know if anybody left. Is everybody go? Yeah? <laughs> Good, excellent. Now the interesting thing about this to me, and it's, it's really fascinating and fun every time, is that we do associate movement and sound. Right? There was no accident that you chose this movement to go with that sound or that sound to go with this movement. Right? There's connections we have in our brains about what kind of movements sound like what? And what kind of sounds would be what kind of movement? Right? So, we're going on sped up time here. So what I'd like to do is get some instruments. And what I want to do is have some people move and some people play. Let's, let's go in half. So we'll have, so just for now, let's see, one, two, three, four. We'll have y'all play, and y'all are going to move. <laughs> I include you when I say play. It's all play. <laughs> all instrumenting is playing. So here's the thing. Here's what I want you to do is. Uh, yeah, we split us up. We're both going to have a counter in each group. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Why don't you switch with somebody? Why don't we switch you since you don't have an instrument to pick up? These guys are already picking up. So let's do this. There's a lot of different. I've never done it this quite this way before, so let's experiment some and see how this works. All the people, what I want you to do is you have all this space to move in. You can move however you want, okay? You can walk around, you can turn around, you can stand still, whatever you want to do. Right? Each of you, I want each of you to pick one of these people and play them. Make sounds that you think go with how they're moving. Okay? Are you going one at a time or all together? No, we'll all go at once. <laughs> Chaos is good in the beginning, especially. Less, less stress. Ready? You mark? You set? Go! Good, good, good. I think that's enough. You guys look like you're done. You guys look like you're done over here. Um, 
Good. So, does, do do you guys do you know who was who was playing you? Oh, I don't think so. He was definitely playing me. I think Mark yep. might have been. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody else feel? Did you did you catch a correspondence between who was playing you? No. Who are you playing? Me, Danny. Danny. Yeah. Anybody else? And he, made, he, he made the most dramatic movement yeah. of it initially, which attracts attention. Which is, the other interesting thing is that you were moving in such a, um, you were moving so, in a, initially in a very rhythmic way, which allowed him to set up that yeah. rhythmic correspondence, and sort of everything in the group sort of revolved around that. You remember we were talking in the first class about how we, when you set up a pulse, when you set up a rhythm, it just attracts yeah, things it, to it. Yeah. yeah, it just does, you know, because we're, that's how we survive, right? Without rhythm, we would all be dead, literally, right? It's the rhythmic beating of our heart. It's the rhythmic breathing in and out of our bodies. It's all these rhythmic movements inside of us that enable us to keep living. Our process is a rhythmic process as humans. Sleep and wake, you know, I mean, we're surrounded by a rhythmic universe. So we're attracted to it. When we see that, we understand the sense of that in a re really fast, faster than other, other kinds of things, you know. So it's just something to be aware of as an improviser. When you set up a pulse, when you set up a rhythm that repeats, it's going to attract attention and it's going to, people are going to go to it um, until you pre repeat it for too long and then then they're not going to hear it anymore. You know, it's like the air conditioner that goes on in the room. You hear it, it's really loud at first, and then you don't hear it, right? So rhythm is like that too. If you repeat the same rhythm over and over and over again, after a certain amount, you, people stop hearing it. So that's another challenge when we're dealing with groove and rhythm is how to keep it alive and fresh, even though it's repetitious. Let's switch, switch roles. I'm going to say a lot of different things. I basically, I say what comes into my head based on what happens. You know things that I see that I think might be interesting or, or you know, might give you some kind of little, little insight, little idea about how improvisation works. I don't expect you to particularly remember it all or even think about it much. But I do expect that a lot of this process is about bringing things to your awareness because we all mostly understand and have dealt with improvisation in our lives as a completely unconscious process. It's something we use continually all the time through our entire lives and probably unless you're a jazz player no one has ever even mentioned it or talked to you at all about how it works, you know, which is to me shocking. So we hope to rectify that a little bit in this um, you know, because basically every innovation springs out of a moment of improvisation. So the more aware you can be, the more things about improvisation, tools of improvisation that you are aware of and can bring into your consciousness and work with consciously, the more able you're going to be to be creative, to be innovative, no matter what it is that you're doing. All right. All right. So we'd split up. We got our two groups. And go! <laughs>
Good, 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 good. That was a nice ending place. Um, one of the things that I think we'll have to work on fairly soon, um, I don't think today, but maybe next time, is ending. We'll do a little, we'll do a little session on beginnings and endings. Um, but for right now, I'll just stop you. <laughs> or you could stop yourself if you feel like it's done. Um, great. So now let's switch this. So now what I want to happen is I want the people that are moving to pick a person that's playing and move how they're playing. So you guys are just going to start playing, improvising together. And at this point, don't worry too much about what you're doing. Just have some fun. Uh, just like we are when you came out and did a sound and emotion. Um, all right, and then you, y'all who are moving, are going to pick one of the people that are making sounds, and you're going to move to their sounds. What's that? Should we try and play something together? Or like I don't think you should try too much anything right now. Okay. You, a lot of times when you're improvising, if you if you try too much, it makes it really hard to improvise. Um, and one of the great things actually about doing structured improvisations, um, which is the secret, the secret goal of a structured improvisation is to give your mind, your conscious mind, your monkey mind, something to latch onto so that you can actually improvise freely. So, uh, so yeah, I don't think it's about too much about it yet. We'll give you more things to think about as we go along. For now, I think it's just important to have, have some fun making sounds. I mean, the interesting thing, if you were paying attention on these last two exercises, the interesting thing is the music was actually very interesting. And you guys actually did play together even though that wasn't our objective, right? And there certainly didn't have anything saying, oh, you're going to move together, you're going to play together. Uh, the fact is, is that people, you get a group of people in any situation doing something together, and they're going to, doing stuff, they're going to start to do it together. It's just how we work, you know? As you get better as an improviser and more conscious and more aware of the possibilities that are around and what your personal uh, preferences and possibilities are, um, then you'll be able to be more conscious about being together. You know, you'll have more choices. But right now, I think we just rely on our natural instinct to make things sound good and, and be together and not think about it. Okay, ready? Okay, here, let's, let's just do this for a second, because this is going to be harder, because, well, it might not be. See, like, I'm already putting expectations on you. Might, this is going to be totally easy, actually. Let's just, ready? Let's go. Go! Stop, here. Stop, let's try this again. I'm going to add one thing. One is I want you guys to feel free to come into here. So you have all this space. It's a, it's a little intimidating, but um, you have all this space to do stuff, so, so let's use the space. You guys, I want you to also be aware of the rest of the group. We'll say that now. <laughs> um, but be aware of them in the same way that you were aware of the people that were moving. You know, like, like when peop the people were moving and you guys were playing, you were aware of what everybody was playing, but you weren't that worried about it. You were just playing stuff that felt good and related to what's going on. Let's do the same thing. All right, ready? Let's do one more time. Same groups. So here, everybody come out. Let's all, let's all spread out in here, just so you're in a space already. You don't have to inhabit the space. You can just be in the space. And now I want you guys... I want you guys, before we start, to pick one of the people to move to. So then you'll, you'll know, right? You'll, you know already when you're going to move and when you're not. You guys that are playing, um, don't feel like you all have to start at once. Wait 
let's add this, this is fun. Let's wait until you actually feel an impulse to make a sound and then make a sound, okay? So that's our structure. Wait until you have an impulse to make a sound, then make the sound. As soon as you don't have that impulse anymore, stop. You guys pick ahead of time before they even start playing who you're moving to. And let's go. <laughs> okay, wait a second, let's stop again. I gave you a bad start for this. Oh, no, let's start. Let's start again. I gave you a bad start for this because the, the kind of exercise we just proposed is better if you guys have a little silence ahead of it. So you can actually, you guys can make a choice. You guys can make a choice about when to come in. Uh, so let's start that again. That was my, my fault as director here. All right, so same thing. Inhabit the space. Get in the space. Come on. Everybody in the space. All right. So you guys, right now, pick who you're following. Is everybody picked? All right, and you guys, take a second. Just pay attention to yourself. Wait to feel like you, you want to play something, and then play. Nice. Nice. Great ending, too. Awesome. All right, switch. Let's switch roles. People who have been moving, get your instruments. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Same exercise. I'm just going to move this back a little bit just in case anybody gets enthusiastic. <laughs> All right, so we got movers. Mm -hmm. Inhabit your space. There you go. Okay. All right. Now pick who you're going to follow. <laughs> pick which instrumentalist you're going to follow. Now the people that are playing instruments, take a moment. Whenever you're ready.
Right. Just for balance, let's do another one, same, same group. This time, whoever's playing, I want you to uh, change the mood of what you're playing. So same thing, you guys pick. Pick a different person from, than you picked before. You got it? All right, you guys ready? <laughs> nice, nice work. I must convince all of you, those are really hard exercises to start off a class for the first class because they're very, you know, you got to do some weird stuff. So I commend you. Thank you for being so uh, generous with your spirit on that. Let's everybody get our instruments. We'll go on to something else because I wanted to get some graphic stuff in here too before we have to leave today. Um, so that just gives you some ideas, gives you, you know, into that universe of like, oh, movement and sound, they go together, you know? And if you watch, you can watch like while you're walking around, watch people as they walk and talk, you know? Uh, just look at nature, see how sounds and movements go together. Um, and that'll give you some interesting ideas and some interesting things um, to play with. Oh, okay. It'll give you some interesting things to play with. Uh, when you start doing work with film. All right, here, you guys go over there, because I'm going to draw some things on the board. So I want to just do some real quick things, just playing around with like gestures and uh, graphic elements and like what our first impressions of them are. Right? So let's just have some fun playing with this. So, you know, talking about this kind of graphic parameters. So this, what does that sound like? Yeah, right? So there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things like that that we just have associations with, you know? Uh, how about this? Interesting. So there's some interesting associations, which is that we tend to think of music visually, um, particularly if you've grown up reading music, you know? That's up. You know, up and down means the same thing in whatever kind of space, you're, whether you're working in musical space or you're working in graphic space, you know? Short and long. We associate certain, yeah, exactly. You know, this. Right? And if I do this. Right? So short and long. 
It's a parameter that has a certain meaning, whether you're moving, you know, or whether you're drawing, or whether you're playing sound. Up and down, high and low. What would that be? What would this be? Right? Right? So all these kinds of things have meaning. And then there's things that have... So there's all these different parameters like that that we just have associations with because of our spatial awareness. You know? um, there's other ones that, if you're a musician, you might have a sense of. I mean, there's no accident that that means what it does. What'd that sound like? All right. Good. So let's do this, because I'm going to put up things. I think this is fun. So what I want to do is, um, like you've been doing, play them. But I want you to do is play them all together as a group. So I'll put it up, and then you guys, I'll give you a little space, and then you guys play it together and stop. And I'll put another one up. We'll talk about them a little bit. Yeah, so uh, crescendo, decrescendo. You know, we learned that in music, it means what it means. But also graphically, it quite obviously means what it means, you know? And I think in, in math, there's like a greater or lesser thing going on here too, right? Is that the same meaning or a different one? No? No? Close enough? What does that mean? What does that symbol mean? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the volume be greater on the right than on the left. Yeah, so same thing. The volume is greater here in music than it is here. Yeah, cool. All right. So here we'll just have some fun and play some different ones. Um, I'll just conduct you to begin, and you can end whenever you feel like it ends. <laughs> That's fun. How about this? Let's see. <laughs> That's fun. I've never done this before. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. How about this? Oh, what would you do if I did this? I figured I had to do that, or else you'd just keep going and going. <laughs> it would never stop. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to do this. All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to add, this is, I think that we could play with this for a little bit and add a couple other elements in here. Um, so I, let's play this as if, let's play this as if you're each playing this sequence individually at whatever pace and whatever timing you want, okay? And it ends, the piece begins whenever the first person starts, the piece ends whenever the last person ends, ready? Cool. 
great. Awesome. Good, let's play the same thing, except now I want you to all move as one. Ready? Good. Now, interesting thing there, and this is pretty much true whenever movement is involved, is that if you're trying to follow somebody or you're trying to move as a group, the first person that moves controls the movement, right? Because as soon as, if you're saying we're all moving together, that as soon as one person moves, everybody else has to move. <laughs> all right. Let's try to, uh, here, let's do this. We'll add another part in. Um, Oh, let's play that first. What does that sound like? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's so weird that we all have similar reactions to these things. Okay, so I guess not so weird, really. <laughs> but it's interesting to me. Okay, so let's... Uh, you can choose. You can choose either to play this part or this part. So it'll be a two-part thing. Uh, the people that are playing each part, I want you to play the part together. All right. So there's two challenges. One, you have to identify the people that are playing your part and stay with them. Um, okay. Ready? And... So did you feel like you knew who was playing what? Yeah? Yeah? Who was playing what? Uh, we saw who was playing the bottom line on the piano. Yeah. I'm not sure who else. Yeah. Was Anybody else? I feel like it was kind of constrained. Like, I feel like if you want to have everyone be on the same page, mm -hmm. then, like, this is at least what went through my head. Sure. Okay, how are we going to time this? Mm. And then, like, there's sort of a standard way read from left to right, you know, approximately the time when you finish <laughs> playing those first two lines, whatever that means. Right. You kind of start the squiggly thing, whatever that means. So right. Just because I assumed that everyone else would be assuming that, I assumed that, et cetera. Right. I sort of did that way. Yeah. But it didn't well, let's say, let's make that more explicit. Because you're right, we're, people, we're used to, as a culture, moving from left to right, but in all kinds of reading. Um, and in music, Temporally, you move from left to right. You know, it indicates time. You know, um, in art, I'm, I'm not sure if that's necessarily true. You know, since it's more. But definitely in music, you tend to think that it that you know this is the beginning, that's the end, and we've sort of been playing that way all along. So let's say specifically, this is the beginning. Actually, let's do repeats. We'll play it twice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to play it twice. That's the beginning, that's the end. All right, so if you choose to do the squigglies, technical term, the squigglies, remember that. Uh, if you choose to do that, then you're starting like a little after the third note. So we, do the, we have to do the same thing both times? Uh, no. No, it might be more fun if you didn't. Okay, you ready? You can start whenever you want. I'm going to stop. Starting you.
That was great. All right, let's add a third part. Anybody? Any volunteers? Can I add a third part? <laughs> okay, you ready? Let's take the let's take the repeats off this time though, because I want to do a couple more, and we're running out of time. Okay, ready? Whenever. Let's do another one. We got time to do one more. This is when I feel really teachery where I, I have to do blackboard. All right. First part. Let's do three parts. So the key here is make them specific, make them simple at this point. It makes it easier. <laughs> Did I blow your thing, man? <laughs> no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Do what you wanted to do. We'll see. Oh, yeah, that's simple. Or not. Oh. It's like that can't, ribbon candy. Cool. All right, what's the second part? <laughs> Good. Let's do this one. Let's split it. Let's fit. Let's do it in, in two different groups, just to make it. Because there's a lot of sound there. Um, so we'll just split in half. One, two, three, four, five. You guys can split up if you want. Or you, you, would you rather do that or play together? All right. Yeah. So you'll be in one, 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 one. My one. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you guys go first, and then, then, you, then you, let's see what they sound like. Good. Now second group, same piece.
I think that's a good place to stop. All right, thank you. So, so for this week, as you're just as you're walking around, pay attention. Pay attention to sound and movement, how they go together in your mind and outside of your mind.